forecasting is for lithium demand growth to remain strong next year, and we're forecasting a delay in new supply to come online, and this should keep the market tight. Next up, Seth Goldstein. He's the equity strategist and chair of the Electric Vehicle Committee at Morningstar, Inc. Seth, welcome back. Thanks for having me back, James. You bet, Seth. It's great to see you again. Now, Seth, I want to start the conversation with uh, a discussion about Goldman Sachs and Credit Suisse. Both came out with a note last week suggesting that the bull market case for metals was disintegrating, and in fact, the bull market was over for now. Goldman Sachs having first come out with that sentiment back in May, which caused uh, lithium stocks and the lithium price to retreat a bit. But now you're coming out and saying that Morningstar is saying that their price increase and the bull case for lithium is intact. How do you reconcile that difference? Well, well what, what we're forecasting is for lithium demand growth to remain strong next year. And we're forecasting a delay in new supply to come online. And this should keep the market tight, even if product, even if new projects go into production, meaning the construction is over, they're starting to actually produce real volumes. It's going to still take 6, 12, 24 months before they're able to sell anywhere close to their full capacity of the project. So even as new supply comes online, it's not going to be this wave of new supply. It's going to be a more gradual supply and combine that with strong demand. And we think that the market will stay tight and prices will remain high. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then there's sort of, you know, the, the, the arguable component of all this is what which lithium supplies are actually going to come on stream. There's lots of mines in various stages of development, but in the lithium space in particular, it seems that they come on stream and then they don't produce what they said they were going to. And so I wonder to what extent the comments of analysts relying on these bullish statements from mining companies might be sort of tainted because they're not discounting the optimism sufficiently. Do you think that's a factor? I think that's a great point. When when I am forecasting supply, I tend to assign a lag based on the producer's experience. So for new producers that have never operated a lithium mine before, I assume that they're going to take at least a couple years to figure it out. And then from there, I also assume a delay in the time from when the construction is finished to when they ramp up anywhere near to full capacity. And, and that delay can range from you know two, three, four years, again, depending on the producer's experience. If you just sit there and take management at their word based on their timelines, you are likely to get a much more bearish outlook for, for lithium prices because you're going to assume all this new supply is going to come online on time and on capacity, and, and there's going to be zero issues operating this new supply. I don't think that's likely to happen. And this isn't just lithium specific. You know, when we look at pretty much any resource extraction industry in the world, all new supply tends to have difficulties coming online. There's always some hiccups in the project. And as a result, it usually is some delay from management's original timeline. And, and you know, factoring in those delays leads me to forecast a tighter supply and higher lithium prices, at least over the next few years. You bet. Okay, so then uh, in your recent note, you also mentioned that your favorite uh, top stock pick, so to speak, is Lithium Americas. And uh, what is the investment thesis behind that? Well, there, there's there's two key things. First, uh, we, we forecast lithium prices will remain high, and that's really our bullish outlook for the entire industry. But then second, and more company-specific, we think the Thacker Pass project in the U.S. is going to get approved and enter production in the middle part of the decade. Right now, I think that's a big overhang on the stock is the regulatory uncertainty because Thacker Pass's federal uh, permit is facing a lawsuit from an activist group in the U.S. We think that it will ultimately get approved and the project will go into construction next year. Uh, we'll have to wait for January for the trial to see that. But, but that's the big thesis is that Thacker Pass, which is the largest lithium resource in the U.S., will come online and that will create tremendous value for lithium America. Yeah. Okay. You bet. Um, what about other battery metals in the space? Do you see uh, supply side constraint driving price increases in other metals? 
Not as much. We we do think that we're likely to see tighter nickel and cobalt uh, metals in the near term. But, you know, battery makers are, are shifting away from entirely nickel and cobalt based battery portfolios to also including your traditional lithium iron phosphate battery chemistries for a, for a number of lower range EVs or energy storage projects where where the energy density is not as important for the battery. And as we see this transition, that's going to reduce demand for nickel and cobalt and likely alleviate supply constraints. But all batteries need lithium for electric vehicles. And so that's going to be the limiting factor for long-term EV adoption is going to be the pace of new lithium supply growth. And do you see any of the competing battery formulations that don't incorporate lithium becoming a threat to the lithium industry anytime soon? I don't think so. I think the, so lithium is the lightest metal that can store enough energy that can make an EV go far enough that, you know, we'd want to drive an EV on the road or that it'd be practical for commercial use like a bus or a truck. Um, when you're looking at energy storage where weight is not an issue and you can basically just build the battery and leave it there next to a solar or wind farm, then you can have any number of different energy storage technologies. So I think in the energy storage space, you're likely to see more competing technologies. But for transportation, it's going to be uh, all lithium-based batteries for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you have a specific number of uh, lithium price that you expect to see in 2023? We're forecasting about 70,000 a ton. So that is a slight pullback as we do forecast uh, demand growth will slow and new supply will come online, but still well above what we view as the marginal cost of production at around 12,000 a ton and, and still well above, you know, many of the more bearish forecasts calling for prices to fall substantially from the mid 70,000s to, you know, 15 to 25,000. We, we forecast 70,000 a ton next year. Oh, that's uh, still up there. Now, most of the uh, pricing that cathode and anode manufacturers face when it comes to inputs of graphite and lithium, respectively, um, they are contract driven. So they don't actually pay $77,000 per ton, or currently I'm looking at the spot price and it's like $83,000 per ton. Is anybody paying that price for the input to their batteries? Very, very few right now. You look at all the major players, you know, your Albemarle, your Live Event, they are all selling their, their lithium on multi-year contracts. So a lot of that's locked in. Um, SQM is selling some of their lithium on spot prices, but even then it lags. So three to six months, depending on the product and SQM is selling a lower quality product in their mix. So, you know, for, for battery makers, they're buying lithium and they might buy a little bit, especially in China at more spot prices. But the majority of major battery makers, you know, your Panasonic's or LG Chem, they're buying their lithium at contract prices, which are far below the current spot prices. Mm -hmm. All right. And that uh, that trend is likely to continue where they're negotiating long term contracts in advance of any price increase. We, we think that we think it is likely to continue. Um, we, we do think that you're likely to see lithium producers shift to more of an index based reference pricing model. But even then, that index pricing could lag anywhere from three, six or 12 months, depending on the length of the contract versus the current spot price. So if spot prices were to run up further, uh, you know, that actually the, the uh, battery producers wouldn't be paying that price for you know, a number of months or a year or so. You bet. All right, Seth, we're going to leave it there for now. Really appreciate your participation as usual. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me back, James. I look forward to the segment. You bet. All right. Thanks, Seth. Bye for now.